This week, Hunky Vape News is going to be jumping all around the globe. Beginning right here in the United States, the Postal Service delays ban on mailing vaping products, and you'll probably never guess why. In New Zealand, their Ministry of Health funded a $1.6 million budget to launch the Vape to Quit Strong campaign. And in the UK, the hospital emergency departments in Norfolk, London, Leicester, and Edinburgh will be giving out free electronic cigarettes for smokers. Meanwhile, back in the United States, the American Heart Association is urging Florida Governor DeSantis to veto the tobacco and nicotine products bill that we talked about before. Also in Montana, their legislature finally passes Senate Bill 398, preventing local authorities from banning vapes and jumping up into Canada, where the Northwest Territories just passed the Tobacco and Vapor Products Control Act just three months ago. Well, they did a study and they found that 51% of the residents are satisfied and they don't want increased vape regulations. But guess what the government's gonna go and do anyway? They're going to march ahead anyway with more incremental laws that people don't want. Meanwhile, cumulative science continues to prove vaping is less harmful than smoking. And jumping down to South Africa, anti-smoking rhetoric is hurting youth prevention messaging around vapes because zealots fail to ask one simple question. What is more harmful to young people? Cigarettes or vaping? And finally, I got a lifestyle piece titled, How to Vape More Safely. All this and more coming up right after this. I'm DJ Alex and this is your Hunky Vape, five on Monday. Yeah, I know, it's supposed to be Friday, but it's Monday. I took the weekend off. I went and hung out in the woods reset everything. I'm feeling so much better, so much more energized. And I also went and did a little vape shop hopping. So I've got a vlog coming up this week. I'm gonna show you my vape shop hopping that I did, what these vape shops are doing to comply with the PACT Act, how they're dealing with it, how it's going to affect them. All this and more is gonna be coming up later this week. So excited. All right, so today, it's your Hunky Vape 5 on Monday. Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 3rd of May, 2021. May already. Oh. Well, the featured story of the week goes to United States Postal Service for breaking the law. Yeah. The federal agency known as the Postal Service is breaking the law because in the omnibus bill, scrolling to page 5,136 of the omnibus bill, there's a section titled Preventing Online Sales of Electronic Cigarettes to Children Act. And if we scroll to 5,139, it states specifically that they're required by law to implement regulations no later than 120 days after the date of enactment of this act. And as I reported last week, they announced the postponement of the final regulations. Care to guess why they're breaking the omnibus bill law? Hmm? Because the cannabis industry lawyers pointed out that other substances in the PACT Act definition of ends goes beyond the FDA's framework authority under the Tobacco Control Act. And they argue that the Jenkins Act, AKA the PACT Act, does not cover products reasonably expected to be used with cannabis or its derivatives, including THC, CBD, and any hemp derived product. You see, they simply argue that none of those products are tobacco products. And if Congress truly wanted to capture other vapor products, 
they should have amended it, the Tobacco Control Act, to allow the FDA to regulate these other substances. Kind of like, kind of like the argument of the glass bongs being sold as tobacco products to avoid being labeled as drug paraphernalia, except it's kind of in reverse. See, the cannabis industry is arguing that vape devices are used for cannabis so they cannot be regulated under the Tobacco Control Act. Is your head spinning yet? <laughs> Moving on to New Zealand. One thing we haven't talked about here is how the United States has hired Hollywood to come up with new propaganda for the youth of today's society. And they're making these cartoons that are depicting vapors as evil and villainous. Yeah? Well, so what's happening around the world? How about in New Zealand? Their Ministry of Health has funded a budget of one point. Ah, let me give you the exact figure here. $1,670,000 for the Vape to Quit Strong campaign. Because see, they understand that vaping is the most effective way to quit smoking. So the total budget for the campaign includes strategy development, creative development, media placement, agency fees, and an allowance for operational costs. Yes, prime time television and radio campaign messages, posters, and bus shelter campaigns in communities with a high smoking prevalence. Mm -hmm. Here we have the Ministry of Health making it very clear that vaping products can make a real contribution to the smoke-free 2025 goal, as well as disrupt significant inequities, such as the young Maori women who disproportionately remain a much higher smoking prevalence rate than all other categories of the community. And their message is simple. Vaping is significantly less harmful than smoking, period, end discussion. Unbelievable. They get it. Not only do they give it, but their government is literally spending millions of dollars to counter this anti-vaping propaganda that's going on by Bloomberg and all the other little puppet organizations that rely on people's funding. We'll get to that later. Because I got another example of how vaping helps people quit smoking and how the government is like, whoa, we really need to counter all this propaganda that's out there that's giving vaping a bad name and dissuading people from trying the safer alternative product. So let's go over to the United Kingdom where they have Public Health England, Professor John Newton declares that the best thing a smoker can do is to stop smoking completely. And the evidence shows that vaping is the most effective quit aid available. So now they're beginning a trial to help people quit smoking. And you know what they're doing? They're giving away free electronic cigarettes in their hospital emergency departments. In the emergency room, you go in for a cold or flu or COVID test or whatever, and you're in the emergency room and you tell them you're smoking. Well, if you're in the hospitals of Norfolk, London, Leicester, and Edinburgh, they're gonna offer you in the emergency department, the doctors and nurses in the emergency departments are going to give you a free vaping device. They're also gonna give you e-liquid supplies to last a week and a referral to smoking cessation services along with the medical advice 
to use the free vaping supplies to quit smoking permanently because it works. Unbelievable. Oh my God. Oh. So what made them decide to give away free vaping supplies? How about the growing evidence that thousands more could have quit except for the unfounded safety fears about electronic cigarettes that's being propagated, propagated by the United States government, by Bloomberg Philanthropies. Mm hmm. Yep. And the World Health Organization. Yeah. So the best way to dispel the false fears that people have was to have hospital emergency departments give away the vapes to their patients. Socialized medicine at its finest because they know these people keep smoking. They're going to have a lot more expenses for their health care. So what do we do when you have socialized medicine running the health care system of a country? You want to minimize your costs. So you want to move people to the safer alternative products. So if it's 95% safer, well, that's going to be a lot cheaper in the long run. If you hand them a couple of vapes and a couple of bottles of liquid, it's amazing. Meanwhile, the United States, with the pharmaceutical and healthcare industry, is heavily profiting on the misery of every single sick person. The American Heart Association is urging Florida Governor Ron DeSantis to veto Senate Bill 1080 because it would prevent local lawmakers from banning the safer product. Yep. The hypocrites of the American Heart Association need people to get heart attacks. So why not oppose the tobacco and nicotine products bill? A bill that limits mail order, limits internet and remote sales of tobacco products and vaping products, makes it illegal for anyone under 21 to smoke or vape on public or private school property, makes it illegal for anyone under 21 to possess any of these products, makes it extremely burdensome for anyone to legally sell these products to adults because the law is now going to require multiple proofs of age and a declaration of intent to use these products and not distribute the tobacco products. It also forces licensure and documentation requirements on all specialty sellers is what they're calling them and dealers and distributors and manufacturers. I mean, seriously, this is not a good bill for vapors or tobacco products, but here the American Heart Association is trying to get it vetoed by the governor because it would stop their need to have localized campaign efforts. What a joke. If this doesn't clearly demonstrate that the American Heart Association is not interested the least bit in healthy hearts, but only interested in their own organization's survival, I don't know what would convince you that this is 1984 coming to reality. Moving on. Moving on to Montana where Hamilton Senator Jason Ellsworth's Senate Bill 398 passed with a final vote in the House of 59 to 40. And you know what? Following the news, this bill was like watching kids play on a seesaw, teetering back and forth and back and forth. Pass, fail, pass, fail, amendment, pass, fail, amendment, pass, fail. Every single time. Ultimately, 
The bill prohibits local governments from prohibiting the sale of vaping products. Yay! But it does allow them to enact reasonable ordinances or resolutions to the sale of vaping products. Mm -hmm. So if you live in Montana or you own a vape shop in Montana, congratulations, you can vape and continue selling your vaping products. But don't be surprised if your local town just taxes the fuck out of your products and regulates the shit out of the safer alternative products. And if you live in Missoula, Montana, you can go you can go and tell your representatives in the local government that they now need to go and change their law because it's illegal for it to be adopted. It is against the state law for local governments to prohibit vapes. But they can reasonably regulate them. Whatever the hell that's going to mean. What a total waste of time, energy, and resources. Typical politicians doing typical lawmaking. A lot of grandstanding and complicated regulations that don't actually change anything for the better. By the way, recreational use of marijuana is completely legal in Montana. Or it will be after October 1st, 2021 when the state initiative number 190, which passed with over 56% of the constituents voting yes to a legal 20% tax recreational product. But vaping? Oh man, we need to ban it. And now if we can't ban it, we just need to regulate the shit out of it. And we're gonna tax it too. What are you gonna tax it at? Like Pennsylvania at 40%? You know, recreational marijuana is going to be taxed at 20%. What kind of message are you sending to the youth of America, to the youth of the people all around the globe? Or don't you think that far in advance? All you're worried about is who's going to give you money for your next re-election campaign because you pissed a lot of people off doing stupid shit that didn't accomplish anything. Moving on. Let's jump across the border to Canada since we're up in Montana anyway, right? Let's just go across the border into Canada. And let's take a look at Northwest Territories because we just talked about them. Because back on March 31st of 2021, of 2020, they adopted the new Tobacco and Vapor Products Control Act. And they made the modifications and amendments to it. And you would think, okay, man, it sucks having to pay these taxes but we can stop sweating. We can we can dodge the bullet. Canadian Vaping Association. Oh yeah, thanks. I appreciate the balanced regulations you ended up coming up with, right? Wrong! Incremental regulations. This is how these idiots work. As soon as they get one bill passed, if it didn't have a whole lot of opposition, guess what? That means we can continue moving the clock to tick another cog in the ridiculous regulation framework and just keep stacking them up one on top of the other. Yeah. The Canadian Vaping Association commented that Saskatchewan did such a wonderful job coming up with balanced vaping regulations. Yeah, that included a 20% vape tax and guess what? It's not the only hurdle imposed on Northwest Territory vapors. Because here we go with more incremental regulations. All because they didn't get very much pushback. And they decided, you know what? Let's survey everyone and find out what they think about these new laws that we just passed. Right? So they asked their residents, does Northwest Territories need even more regulations. Yeah. And Northwest Territories Department of Health and Social Services surveyed a whole 520 people. Yeah, 520 people and found out that 51% of the respondents said that we don't need any more regulations. You've already regulated it enough. I mean, it, it, it's got to stop. It's enough. No more. 
Well, 49% said, oh, yeah, we need more regulations. So they had a secondary question for those people that said that we need more regulations. And they said, how many of you think that we should just ban it all together? Yeah. Well, the data show that 90% of the 49% want a total ban on vaping products. So the 229 people who want a ban, well, we've got to go and appease them. Seriously? 44% of the people want a complete ban on safer products? So we need more regulations up to and including a complete ban? I guess they're jealous of Nova Scotia and the Prince Edward Island vape regulations. So let's forget about the 51% who said, no, no, you already got too many regulations. Enough is enough. We're going to go and implement more laws because obviously, you know, a percentage of the population wants a ban. So we're going to appease the minority and institute catastrophic laws. They're going to hurt public health, kill people. For what? Why? Can somebody tell me why? Why are they going to do this? No, nobody's going to be able to because it doesn't make any sense. There's no logical reason for them to continue doing this. Well, let's move on to a new continent, okay? Let's take a look at South Africa, where anti-smoking rhetoric is hurting youth prevention messaging around vapes. Yep. The chief executive from the Vapor Products Association of South Africa articulates it fluently that the unscientific one-size-fits-all rhetoric by anti-smoking lobbyists has influenced governments all around the world to pass detrimental legislation restricting the marketing and distribution of vapor products the exact same as conventional tobacco. And now it's having a catastrophic harmful effect on society's youth. I've got two articles from South Africa and they both, both of them boil down to one simple question. What is more harmful to young people? Combustible cigarettes or vaping? The answer is obvious. And lastly, I got an article from the San Diego Entertainer Magazine titled, How to Vape More Safely. What? Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Oh, man. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is the actual text from the omnibus bill and here we are page 5136 preventing online sales of electronic cigarettes to children act which passed with the omnibus bill and let's continue to scroll down we'll get to the end of it 5139 Regulations not later than 120 days after the date of the enactment of this act, the United States Postal Service shall promulgate regulations to clarify the applicability of the prohibition of mailing of cigarettes under Section 1716E of Title 18 United States Code to electronic nicotine delivery systems in accordance with the amendment to the definition of cigarette made by section 602. And the effective date will be the day that they issue the regulations. And the postal service says, see you later. Sorry, we can't figure it out. Well, here we go. I have an article published by the Green Light Law Group that says we have the, th the cannabis industry to thank for the lack of regulations. Yeah. 
We can thank the cannabis industry for the lack of regulations and the lack of the post office publishing new regulations and delaying the implementation of these new rules for the enforcement of a ban on direct-to-consumer mailing of vaping products. So in other words, me waiting for the past two weeks for my last order from Element Vape was all for naught because the post office is just didn't get around to publishing any updates, so technically you could still mail something. Have a nice day. Once again, just keep shoving it up there. No lube included. Sorry. Well, here we go. They remain optimistic about the mailability, especially despite the grim outlook lately in the news. Uh-huh. One reason is that the principles of statutory interpretation lend credibility to the argument that the ban does not apply to vaping products that are not used to deliver tobacco or nicotine. So by that statute, my zero milligram that I use would technically be allowed to be mailed even though it's a vaping product. Is that, what the, is that what they're trying to tell us? Is that what the law is going to be interpreted as? Or is it gonna be regulated as part of the PACT Act? Is it gonna regulate every single vaping product? Is that what they meant by other? products that don't contain nicotine, don't contain any tobacco derivatives whatsoever, are classified as other products. But the cannabis industry is optimistic because according to them, just because it's an e-cigarette or an e-hookah or an e-pipe or an e-cigar or a vape pen or advanced personal vaporizer or electronic pipe, or any component, liquid, or part, or accessory of those devices that's used for marijuana, well, then, therefore, it doesn't apply. Because according to them, the Tobacco Control Act can only regulate tobacco-based products or derivatives of tobacco. That's why they get the nicotine cover. But according to them, well, the PACT Act definition of ENDS was likely uh, intended by its drafters to capture formulations of e-liquids containing tobacco or nicotine that sophisticated lawyers for the tobacco industry would argue are outside of the FDA's framework under the, the, the Tobacco Control Act. So that's why they put that in there. And they say that the cannabis vaporizer community could make the argument that the ENDS definition included in the PACT Act does not cover products reasonably expected to be used with cannabis or its derivatives, including THC, CBD, hemp-derived products, and that those products are not reasonably expected to be used for human consumption as a tobacco product. That's their argument. Is that the reason why the post office held up the regulations? Did they get themselves into a little conundrum where they have multiple laws contradicting each other? Is this something that's gonna end up having to be resolved by the federal court? Is it something that's gonna to rise to the level of the Supreme Court? Bottom line, post office is gonna do what the post office is gonna do. And we, because of the way the law is written, are going to be subject to them whether we like it or not. It's just a matter of when. So unless they pass some legislation that reverses it or clarifies it, we're stuck with the law written the way it is. So broadly defined that even this chunk of plastic right here It's considered an ENDS product because it's a drip tip. Even though it has nothing to do with tobacco, 
has no derivatives of tobacco in it. It is literally just a piece of plastic. But the way that the law is written, a reasonable person would say, well, that's part of an ends product. There's no way in hell that the post office can enforce it. Because how do they know what this is getting attached to? Hmm? How do they know this isn't a little plastic bushing for something? For a kid's toy? They don't know. There's no way to know. And they specifically said that in the Federal Register. They have no hope of enforcing this law. Well, being that there's nothing we can do about it, and it is what it is, let's move on to New Zealand. Because over in New Zealand, once again, the Aotearoa Vapors Community Advocacy Group released a press release congratulating New Zealand and their Department of Health, the Ministry of Health, for funding the Vape to Quit Strong campaign. $1,670,000 has been budgeted to this campaign because they know vaping is an effective tool to quit smoking. And they know that the anti-vaping propaganda that's been out there has confused people and is preventing people from picking up the safer alternative. And they're still smoking. And there's disproportionately a higher number of women that smoke in New Zealand. More specifically, if we look down here, there's a strong focus on the young Maori women who remain disproportionately represented in New Zealand smoking rates. Mm -hmm. And this is the way that they plan on countering this with television advertisements and radio advertisements and posters and billboards and bus stop advertising. Interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how well this campaign does. But it's using $1.6 million of taxpayers' money to promote the Vape to Quit Strong campaign. And it's part of the government's latest Smoke Free 2025 reboot. And its pending vape regulations will both overlook the key role vaping can play in getting more Kiwis off of deadly combustible cigarettes. So, the AVCA says good on the Ministry of Health and the Health Promotion Agency on its work with Maori to deliver a campaign that they all know will be effective. We hope it's going to be effective because people's lives are at stake. And that's why, jumping over to the UK, published in the BBC, we have an article here that says, Free Electronic Cigarettes for Smokers in a and &E trial. Mm-hmm. Smokers attending emergency departments will be giving free electronic cigarettes and taught how to use them in a trial designed to help people quit smoking. Patients are going to be offered the device, enough e-liquid supplies for a week, and referral to local smoking service, smoking cessation services, alongside medical advice. Kind of interesting how in the United States, you're not allowed to say, this is the vaping, this is a safer alternative product. But in the UK, it's considered medical advice. Hospitals in Norfolk, London, Leicester, and Edinburgh are going to participate. And it says electronic cigarettes are not available in the NHS other than in trials, but health experts say they can help people quit. Why are health experts saying that they can help people quit? Because there's already been scientific studies that have proved that it is five times more effective at smoking cessation than traditional nicotine replacement therapy products. Mm hmm And once again, they have to tout the fact that it's not completely risk-free, but if it wasn't 95% safer, it wouldn't be given away at hospitals. 
They're trying to make it the attractive option. And it says right here that the best thing that a smoker can do is to stop smoking completely. And the evidence shows that vaping is one of the most effective quit aids available, helping around 50,000 smokers quit every single year. And they know that thousands more could have quit except for the unfounded safety fears about electronic cigarettes. The unfounded safety fears that is being propagated by the United States government is being propagated by Bloomberg Philanthropies, and it is being propagated by the World Health Organization. So Public Health England needed to do something to reverse the trend. And sometimes when you have arguments that are coming from both sides, the only way that you can truly get somebody to give it a shot and give it a try is just to say, here, take this, use this, use this to quit smoking. If you enjoy it, it'll be easy. What flavor you want? It's not the way it is in the United States, though. American Heart Association, despite this bill in Florida, the tobacco and nicotine products bill that we talked about before in the news, Senate Bill 1080, Despite it making mail order, internet, and remote sales of tobacco products extremely hard and complicated, despite this bill making it unlawful for persons 21 years of age to smoke tobacco or vape, despite this bill banning it in, on, or within a thousand feet of real property comprising public or private elementary, middle, secondary schools, and despite this law, putting in punishment for those that are under 21, if they're caught with these products, and despite this law, regulating the marketing sale and delivery of tobacco products in the state, and despite that this law requiring proof of age and intent for the purchase of these products and requiring retail nicotine product dealers to acquire permits and file paperwork. The American Heart Association says, Governor DeSantis, you should, you should veto this bill because if you veto the bill, then we'll be able to go and, you know, send our people out to local communities so that we can lobby those politicians to enact local laws. Because if you don't veto this bill, then we have nothing to do in Florida because it's already been settled. We have to focus on something else. What are we going to focus on? Clean air to affect hearts? What? Oh, no, we can't do that. So what are we going to do? We're going to lobby against the food industry for clogging our arteries, right? Well, we can't do that because the food industry is what gives us funding to operate. So we can people keep people distracted from realizing that the soft drinks that we're drinking are clogging our arteries. The meat that we're eating is tainted with all kinds of who knows what when they're grown on these farms inside these buildings thousands upon thousands upon thousands of animals packed into this little tiny shed and that's where they grow up till they're slaughtered. That's causing heart attacks. But we can't talk about that because, you know, Purdue's giving us money. I mean, eat chicken. That's what they're telling you to do. Uh-huh. I'm not going to get into that topic of conversation. That's a whole nother rant. However, they want the governor to veto this bill, despite this bill not being good news for vape shops and vapors in Florida, because of all its ridiculous regu regulations and requirements. What started out as a simple bill that was going to change the state law to match the federal law of Tobacco 21 is now turned into something totally different. It's a completely different beast. Yep. 
We've talked about this before too. And how this is all going to be regulated by the Bureau of Alcohol. Mm -hmm. And how Florida statute is amended in multiple instances. And there's going to be tobacco product and nicotine product enforcement officers or agents created because of this bill to go out and verify that these products are not being sold to people under the age of 21, to verify that there are people that are under the age of 21 are going to be fined and punished and penalized for having these products. And then they're going to go after the people that they got it from. And then they're going to be punished and penalized. Well, that's the whole idea of this bill, right? To stop these kids from getting access to these safer products. To stop these kids from accessing any tobacco product, period. And to find and punish those people that do give it to them. Uh-huh. Well, American Heart Association says, no, no, you need to veto this bill. Yeah. Yeah. Can you come up with a reason why? A logical reason why they would veto this bill that makes it incredibly impossibly hard to legally go and sell these products as it is? Hmm? Why? Well, let's take a look at the article. According to the article, this is going to give a free reign to the tobacco industry to advertise products to our youth. What? What? That's the best they can come up with. When you have a bill that's already this ridiculous, that's the best they can come up with. It's giving the tobacco industry free reign to market and advertise these harmful products to our youth. Right. More like you just want to make sure that you have a reason to exist in the state of Florida. And if the issues were resolved, then well, you'd have to focus on something else, but you have nothing else to focus on. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Let's move on to Montana. We've been following this for a long time. Started off in the news with Melusa. Mo Mo Ooh, I can't even say it now. Missoula, Montana. We started off with Missoula, Montana, banning vapes, not only in their town, but extending miles outside of their town. Well, we had a vape shop owner decided that, you know what, he was going to run for office and he was going to get a state bill passed that would prevent local authorities from banning the safer alternative product because the guy owned a couple of vape shops, Jason Ellsworth. Was a Republican from Hamilton. And I've been watching this on the news and following this closely. And I, I didn't bother bringing it up on the news because quite honestly, it's like a freaking seesaw back and forth and back and forth. It, it passed, it failed, it passed, it passed again, it failed. And then there was more amendments and then more, and then it passed again and then it failed again. Well, it finally passed here. Now all we need to do is get the governor to sign off on it. So, what is the final outcome of this bill? Well, it does prevent local authorities from banning the product altogether, but it does allow them to create reasonable ordinances and resolutions and regulations related to the sale of vaping products. Okay, I can understand why you would want to block it from being sold in front of a school or something like that. Okay, fine. But what is this going to be done? How is this going to be done? What is classified as reasonable? The bill does not define what reasonable is. I thought the, the purpose of having laws was to clearly define this is black, this is white, it's supposed to eliminate all these shades of gray, but that's not what happened. Just like the omnibus bill, 
Did it really need to be 5,590 pages long? No, it didn't. But that's the only way that they can make sure that people get what they want, even though it contradicts what other parts of the thing might say or what other parts of the law says. That's how they get favors taken care of. Well, for now, it's done. And the governor probably is going to sign off on this. So for the people who live in Montana, congratulations. Vaping will not become illegal in your state, but it's not going to stop your local town and your local government from passing laws that they feel are reasonable to protect the public health of their constituents. So this law really didn't accomplish hardly anything other than preventing the total ban of the subject. Moving on, Northwest Territories in Canada. The territorial government will press ahead with new regulations to limit the sale of flavored vapor products after receiving divided public feedback on the project. I talked about this last week. That they just got done making amendments to the Tobacco and Vapor Products Control Act. That this was passed in March of last year and now they just got done revising it just three months ago. They made changes to it. And now people in Northwest Territories can welcome a 20% vape tax. So you would think, okay, the battle's done. It's over and done with. No, no. Six months after the territory's new Tobacco and Vapor Products Control Act, which regulates the display and advertising of vaping products and prohibits their sale and supply to minors took effect, on Tuesday, the Department of Health and Social Services released a report summarizing the residents' input. 520 online and written responses were received alongside sessions with students, teachers, parents, and healthcare staff. In all, the department said 51% of those respondents do not support the development of regulations, and 49% did. So, what are we going to do? Common sense would say, oh, we got 51% of the people happy. Let's move on. No, that's not what they're doing. They went and they took a look at the 49% who did, and they said, well, approximately half of them want new regulations. So since half of them want it, well, we'll give it to them. We'll let them have the regulations, especially because 90% want a total ban of vapor products. 90% of the 49% want a total ban of the vapor products. 10% said only flavors specifically marketed towards youth, such as candy and dessert should be banned. Keeping tobacco and flavorless vapors available to adults. That might look like it's flavorless, but it's not blue raspberry they want it to be flavorless it kind of defeats the whole purpose of vaping if it's flavorless if it's just plain vgpg and nicotine it kind of loses its appeal which is going to mean that more people are going to go back to smoking deadly combustible tobacco instead of vaping talk about crippling I mean, that would be like forcing diet sodas to contain no artificial sweetener whatsoever. Just plain whatever flavors make up the soda without any sweetness. Do you think they would sell any diet sodas ever? Of course not. To vape or not to vape, as the population of vaping has grown, so is the scrutiny of potential health risks. Except there aren't any significant health risks. Only health benefits to switching to the safer alternative product. Anyway, there's a link in the bottom of the description. You can take a look at this. Or if you want to take a look at the actual regulations, you can take a look at that. That'll be linked below too. Let's move on to a whole new continent, shall we? Let's move on to South Africa. 
where we have anti-smoking rhetoric is hurting youth prevention messaging around vapes. Mm-hmm. Big surprise. Highly reputable agencies such as the Royal College of Physicians and Public Health England have published evidence that electronic vapor products are 95% less harmful than smoking. That's why they're giving them away in their emergency departments to get people to give up their deadly combustible habit. Well, the Vapor Products Association of South Africa, their chief executive, Asanda Koyi, said, this unscientific one-size-fits-all rhetoric by anti-smoking lobbyists has influenced certain governments around the world to pass legislation restricting the marketing and distribution of electronic vapor products under the exact same legislation that applies to normal cigarettes. And in South Africa, the debate currently open around the impending control of tobacco products and electronic nicotine delivery systems bill, we need to ensure that we do not head in the same direction. Mm-hmm. Besides the damage this myopic approach does to the adult smoker who is trying desperately to find a safe, less harmful alternative, or at the very least cut down by using vaping devices, it creates highly contradictory misunderstandings around possible underage use. What's that mean? Well, it means that the young people think that smoking is safer than vaping because the constant harassment and tarnishing of vaping in general is causing more of these young people to say, well, I can either smoke or I can vape. They're both equally harmful, so well, I'm gonna do whatever's cheaper and easier to access. And because of all the regulations, vaping products are no longer easy to access. But cigarettes are. Every street corner you go to, every convenience store, every gas station, every grocery store has tobacco products for sale. So that's what's happening. And it's common sense. I'm going to read you a little article, little section here. It's from Dr. Dylan Human, the chair and co-founder of the Africa Harm Reduction Alliance, who is a strong advocate for vapor products as a highly effective harm reduction tool for smokers. And he once sat on the side of anti-tobacco lobbyists and can comment on the take no prisoners approach that is being used by these anti-tobacco zealots and the approach that the movement tends to enforce, often at the cost of sound scientific evidence. He says, when I was full-time in tobacco control, that was a tactic that we used, said Human. We wanted to enforce regulation in three ways. First, you demonize the product. Second, you demonize the manufacturer. And third, you want to make sure the consumer is isolated. So it's a political strategy that's often used to get the strictest type of regulation. The way to bridge that gap is to have all stakeholders take part in providing scientific inputs needed to get to a point where you can say, this is the true extent, for instance, of youth use. What is needed instead, said human, is the empathetic message. And Kagoyi agreed. Stigmatizing vapor products in the same way as cigarettes serves no one. It denies smokers the right to make an well-educated choice for themselves. That's why they deny the science. So what they get to and what they ultimately boil this down to is 
Ask one simple question. For all these anti-tobacco zealots, ask them one question. What is more harmful to young people? Cigarettes or vaping? Because the answer is obvious. Young people are of the view that vaping is different from cigarettes, but it can be more harmful than cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And that's what's being brainwashed into all these members of society, not just the youth of society. They're brainwashing the adults in it as well, applying these scaremonger tactics and telling them that, oh, all these people had a volley and that's what got them to, to they died vaping. Fear mongering. The reason they're using that as a tool. Take a look at the link in the description below if you want to read more about it. But they actually go and they talk about how both sides of the aisle have gotten to the point now, at least in some parts of the world, where they realize they both need to get something to walk away from this. Unless you're like the American Heart Association in which you're only worried about your own funding and the own, your own reason for having existence. Well, one last thing before we get to our entertainment section for today. I wanted to talk about the new vape law and how it's going to be impacting a lot of these small mom and pop operations. When I went vape store hopping this past weekend, I met a lady who eight years ago was able to quit smoking because of picking up one flavorful vape. And that motivated her to open up a little vape shop, a little gift shop that sells vape products. And like a lot of these little mom and pop operations, not just hers, but multiple other ones that I've come across in my multiple excursions into little vape stores, I've come to find that there's a category of vape shops that did exactly the same thing that consumers of vaping products did just like I did when the PMTA regulations were coming down and there was the imminent threat of not being able to access these safer harm reduction products. They stocked up with everything they can get their hands on. And they have shelves overloaded and full of products. And for a little town that sells these, their inventory right now might last six months. It might last a year. It all depends how limited the resources are for the actual vapors that live in these smaller communities. So despite what some vape reviewers might like you to think that these vape manufacturers are sitting around waiting a month or two to determine how many of these stores are still going to be left. I'm here to tell you that there's no way that in a month or two, we're going to know what the damaging effects are of these new vape, vape regulations let alone what damage was caused by all the COVID restrictions and the lockdowns and shutdowns. A lot of these people are, are barely surviving as it is right now. And it's going to start to show. But it may be six months or a year down the road before we know how many of these shops actually ended up closing because of these vape regulations and because of the COVID lockdowns. So if you live in a little town, where you're out traveling, stop by a vape shop and help support their ability to survive in this day and age of uncertainty. And if you happen to be a little vape store and you have not complied with the requirements of the PACT Act, don't let this little article brought up by the cannabis industry prevent you from doing what you need to do to stay in operations because the PACT Act does require you selling nicotine products and tobacco products to register with the ATF, to register with state and local tax administrators to collect the appropriate taxes. The little mom and pop techniques of, oh, well, we're gonna collect the taxes, but we're not actually gonna file them with the state. 
that's going to be easily revealed because when you do go around, eventually you will be forced to purchase replacements for the items that you have in inventory. It's going to be quite obvious that you're a store and not just a little consumer purchasing inventory for themselves. Because every single step of the importation of these products to the distribution from the distributors to the stores and the couriers that are utilized to get those products to the end user is being documented right now. And if anybody places a big order, it's obvious and it's going to stand out. And that's where the ATF is going to target their enforcement. I had a conversation this week in one vape store that we stopped at about how my son lives down in Texas. And I asked him a couple times, when you're at the local vape store, ask them, what do, what do they know about the PACT Act? What do they know about the PMTA application process for those stores that are still selling their own juices? And to be honest with you, most of the stores he goes to, they have the independence mindset where when they come in and seize our inventory, then we'll be done. Until then, we're going to do what we need to do. I'm here to tell you, if you're a vape shop and you're watching this and you haven't registered with the ATF and you haven't registered with the local and state tax authorities, now's the time to do it because they will catch on to you. And when they do, the fines are going to be enough to bankrupt you. Civil penalties include fines greater than $5,000 or 2% of your gross sales during the year. That's just for the initial violation. Second violations are double. Criminal penalties can include three years in prison. So if you're one of those little stores that is trying to escape by under the radar, I would um, do what it takes to get registered and get your books on the record. Unless you plan on closing shop once your inventory is gone. And then once you're gone, you're gone. So what are they going to do? I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you legal advice. I'm just a consumer of these products who cares passionately about people being able to access safer nicotine products. There's going to be a link in the description below for this website that gives you links and tells you what all you need to start doing if you haven't already done it. time to become compliant if you aren't and if you are god bless you trying to keep up with everything because everything's in flux and everything's changing local laws and regulations so if you're selling it online i don't know how the hell you're going to keep up with all the changes well not to beat a dead horse i think it's time we moved on i've got an article here from the san diego entertainer magazine titled how to vape more safely Hmm. Is this article really going to teach you how to vape more safely? Or is this somebody that looked into it and thinks they know what they're talking about, but isn't actually a vapor? Let's take a look at the article a little closer and see what we can come up with, huh? It says vaping was invented at the beginning of the century and has been getting more and more popular. Well, it sounds good, but I don't think it's very accurate. Many people still have a hopelessly vague idea of how it works. That is a very true statement. This article aims to set the record straight on what vaping is and if you choose to vape, how to do it more safely. Well, you should be commended on that. That's a good goal to have. It says, before we start, it should be stated that vaping is not a harmless habit. Okay. Could put a warning in there. It's not totally harmless. Okay. It can be dangerous, especially for adolescents to vape. Okay, I can see why you said that. The point is that even though nicotine leaves are not getting burnt, nicotine leaves, you mean tobacco leaves. Nicotine in a liquid form transforms into vapor and gets into the bloodstream, which influences both mental and physical health. Well, like any drug, it has positive and negative effects. And depending on the dosage, it's going to change how much of those are positive and how much of those are negative or what the harm potential of it could be. 
So then they go right into talking about nicotine society. Well, how is that going to teach someone to vape more safely if you talk about nicotine society? Hmm? It says even the best electronic cigarette is not safe enough to avoid possible nicotine abuse. Well, yeah, that's true. Somebody chooses to abuse any drug, they can abuse the drug. Anybody can take excess of anything, including water, and turn it into something harmful. This is essential to point out the 480,000 deaths every year result from health impairments due to smoking in the United States. Okay. This is according to the survey data from 2019, more than 14% of the population aged more than 18 are current smokers. Many of them confess that they tried smoking for the first time far before the age of 18. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention gather data from all types of surveys all over the country. Visit their website for more information. Okay. How is this teaching somebody to vape more safely? This is for those of us, for those that choose to vape as an alternative to smoking, electronic cigarettes are one of the ways to do so. What other way is there for you to vape as an alternative to smoking if it isn't using an electronic cigarette? I'm more not going to argue about semantics. Vaping rules. In order to vape correctly, start with understanding your electronic cigarette, how your electronic cigarette works. If not used properly, the user can damage by the device. There are a series of vape pod explosions which took place a couple years ago, for example. Vape pod explosions? Listen, every single manufacturer of a vape device out there has safety features enabled so that if you were to shove this into your pocket and you were wearing a pair of tight pants, it would automatically shut off the circuit after a number of seconds. And in some devices, you can change that cutoff timer. But a vape pod by itself is not going to be a dangerous device unless it's counterfeit and not designed with these safety features. However, if you were to take a big, large tank with external batteries and put in batteries that are incompatible with the purpose of vaping, because they weren't high amperage draw batteries, I could see where you would have a problem with the batteries overheating. And I could see if you were trying to charge them in the device without purchasing an external battery charger, how that could lead to problems with your battery. And the last thing that you want is for one of these batteries to go into thermal runaway. So I could see where there is danger in it. But for the average user that picks up a starter package, especially one with an internal LiPo like this, the device is designed to be safe and designed to circumvent potential problems. However, I'm not going to get into bashing this article any further than I already have. Because it says choosing a device, buying even the best electronic cigarette requires reading the manual before using the device. You want a better piece of advice? that are reading the manual, because I know I've read plenty of these manuals and that some of them are really, really thin. How about you talk to somebody that actually vapes? Go into a vape store and talk to somebody that actually uses these devices and have them show you how to safely operate a vaping product. Or talk to a friend or family member that vapes and have them show you the fundamentals of vaping. Or look at one of the thousands of videos that are on YouTube about the top 10 or the five top five tips for new vapors. Cause they're going to teach you the fundamentals. They're going to teach you some basic rules about buy a device that is for your level of expertise and your level of needs. And when you first get started, maybe a little simple device like the Inic Inceptor would be perfect for you because there's nothing really to learn. You fill up the cartridge, you drop it in, you charge it with an external charger because it's a sealed internal LiPo and you don't even have to push the button because it'll operate without it. Just like the disposable devices you buy in a gas station. Get started with something simple. Don't get started with a complex device. If you don't know somebody that can show you how to use it safely. 
Maybe that would have been better to put in this article. However, the article does tell you that, you know, there are more technically advanced devices that can be complicated for a beginner. And that a simple starter kit is probably better off for most people. And it says that the price varies from 20 to $60 while the price no longer is accurate. Because with the taxes, even the $20 item now costs a lot more than $20. It's just some devices are disposable and some are pre-filled, some are not. Trustworthy vaping reviews can also help. There are plenty of reviews on YouTube to show you how to use a device. You buy the device, learn the device. Common sense. However, this last title one doesn't make any sense to me. It says inhaling properly. Having dealt with the manual to any vaping device, it's still important to understand how one's body should act while vaping. Listen, if you're picking up a vaping device because you want to quit smoking, your goal is to get enough nicotine so that you don't crave your cigarette. And when you first start vaping, you're going to have a little bit of a head rush. Okay. That's why the teenagers love to misuse these products because they want that head rush. But for those of us that have been smoking for decades, you don't get that head rush anymore. So when you pick up a device like this and you start to get that head rush, you know, you've had too much and you need to take a break from it for a little while. Okay. Inhaling correctly is important for both one's health and pleasure from the activity. I'm not going to get into this conversation of how to inhale properly. I'm going to teach you that if you have any questions about this, talk to the person you bought it from. So there is some benefit to having these vape regulations requiring people to go into shops to purchase these things. If you don't know what you're doing, leave it alone. Common sense. And I love how this article wraps up by saying studies have shown the safety of vaping is determined by the amount of nicotine the body gets. Really? The safety of vaping is related more to the ingredients that are put into these commercial juices and the commercial juices have already been found to be safe. And then after the PMTA process is finalized, you're going to have stuff that is literally tested in a lab under varying conditions and the safety and effectiveness of those products are going to be way more than some home juice brewed up. But realistically, those of us that get into DIY e-liquids are using commercially available flavorings that have already been tested and have been sold for the purposes of making e-liquid. So if you're talking about the safety of liquid that goes into these devices, I have a feeling they're talking about stuff that isn't involving nicotine. And if that's the case, then you definitely need to talk to somebody that knows what the hell they're talking about, because I personally don't know anything about vaping anything that doesn't have zero milligrams or three or six milligram of nicotine. I have seen plenty of articles where people that are trying to vape CBD or make their own CBD liquids are having problems with, well, I put this in there and it separates from this. Well, then obviously you're using incompatible fluids. And maybe the reason why we have such a problem in this country with safety and effectiveness is because of these ridiculous laws and regulations. It would simply legalize all of this there would be plenty of businesses ready to step up and make commercially available juice. But I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole nother conversation. I would like to finish off this week by thanking every single one of you that watch this video every single week. I'm telling you, I have found a new frame of mind and I'm looking forward to putting out the vlog this week. I got so wrapped up in trying to get everything moved over and get this new studio done and get this all the stuff taken care of that I haven't done any recording of any vlogs or any product reviews or any of this other stuff. I got some vape mail that's been sitting here for weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm going to be opening some of that up in this upcoming vlog. I'm going to show you the different places that we visited over the weekend when we went to our vape store hopping. I've got some e-liquid recipes that I've been trying to get around to making. I haven't had the opportunity to because I've been working about working and then doing the studio and doing this and doing this and it's time to enjoy this. I got into this because I wanted to enjoy this. 
And that's why you guys are here to watch it, to try and get something entertaining that's fun to watch and maybe something you want to learn and try for yourself. So I've got my strawberry crunch bar recipe that I've been mixing up and I finally got the ingredient I need to make the correct recipe of it. And now I'm going to try the two dot and see which one actually tastes better. See if the mistake might actually be a plus because it actually might make it more realistic because I can't imagine how much more realistic this juice can be. Strawberry crunch bar that literally tastes like a strawberry crunch bar. Man, if I had some WS23, it would literally have the cooling effect to it too, but the flavors are 100% right on the profile. So anyway, look forward to the vlog coming out later this week. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and hope you have a great day. See you next time.